for an airplane. I ain't got time to take a fast train. Lonely days are gone, I'm a going home. My baby just wrote me a letter. Oh yeah, what's up everybody? It is your ever-loving troubadorial cat daddy Jackson Galaxy here to sing my guts out for you. Why? Because today we are going to be talking a little bit about traveling with your cat. Talking to a friend of ours here named Tony who's got a question. So let's get to it right now. All right, hi Jackson. Uh, my name is Tony and this is my baby bear cat Basil. And we are actually getting ready to move. Now we're actually getting ready to move across the Pacific Ocean uh, to the island of Oahu. Uh, and it's pretty exciting. We had to get him a whole bunch of vaccinations and all that sort of stuff, and he took it like a champ. But the deal is, now we have to travel. We gotta do two cross-country trips. We have to do one, oh, he's off. We have to do one trip to Montana, and then we're gonna be eventually flying from Montana uh, into Honolulu, Hawaii. And so I just wanted to know, um, could you give us some tips for traveling uh, with a cat? Uh, that would be very, very helpful, both long road trips as well as long plane trips. All right, thanks so much, Jackson. Bye. All right, so this is uh, a lot of travel. So, Tony, I'm glad you asked. And it sounds like you and Basil are peas in a pod, and you're about to be peas in an airplane two times over. First things first, let's deal with the carrier because we've talked about this in other videos. Check this one out right above my head uh, if you want a little bit more uh, in depth about it. But the idea is that we want your cat to be as comfortable as they possibly can in their carrier. Thinking about their carrier is sort of their portable base camp, their panic room, the place that they will go when they're feeling a little bit insecure. So then by the time that you go on a trip like this, they're not associating that carrier with bad things happening like, oh, Oh, here it comes, I gotta go to the vet. But this is the place they go uh, when good things happen. Their, their blankets are in there, things that smell like you. They get their favorite treats in there. You might wanna put this carrier near your bed. If he tends to wanna sleep in bed with you, near bed, whatever, this uh, gives him that sense of belonging with you in your main space. Uh, if at first he's just really not into the carrier, take the door off it, take the top off it. Uh, just make it into a bed, make it into a den so that you're putting, again, his favorite blanket goes in there. If he doesn't have one yet, make one for him. Put that blanket on your bed, he sleeps on it. An old t-shirt of yours, yeah, I know it might sound a little ranky, but take that t-shirt that's off you right now. It's a nice t-shirt, take it off right now. Put that in his bed uh, so it has your smell and that it, he can complement it uh, with his. And, uh, and then his favorite treats, whatever that jackpot treat is that Basil likes the best, only gets it in that bed, in that den, in that carrier, that kind of thing. Um, but one little piece of advice for you here, well, this is all one big piece of advice, but, but subset A, paragraph 17, uh, is make sure that the carrier that you're using is airline approved. Uh, that's really important because you could get him all psyched about his carrier and then ba bang you get to the airport They're like that is not going under your seat, buddy And then you're really stuck because you do want him traveling under the seat and not in cargo ever Okay, you don't want your cat in cargo. That's not the place for him to be. He will freak So please make sure of that ahead of time now, one thing that I think is important for you specifically, Tony, is that you're saying that you guys are moving, moving. And this is a very common mistake that, that a lot of folks moving don't really think about, which is that your cats are very hip to the fact that you're moving. Suitcases are out, rooms are emptying out, the place is suddenly echoing where it never did before. It is devoid of all territorial signposts that say to them that everything is cool. Don't forget, cats derive so much of their mojo from that territory and what's in that territory so here you go when you are going to move out establish base camp check out this video here right here on base camp and and really follow it to the letter man because I can't give you a, a stronger piece of advice set up base camp on your way out and your way in so all of the good stuff that your cat associates with home and anything that doesn't have to be thrown into a moving truck or whatever. So whether that's cat beds, cat blankets, food, litter box, things like that, man, just keep it, keep it and move it at, at the very last minute. 
So it, just don't expose them to the, the mayhem that is moving. Don't forget, man, that, that when we move, it has been shown that from stress levels in humans, moving house is second only to a death in the family. That's the truth. So if that's your stress level, just imagine what Basil's is going to be. So try to keep him safe from that. And then as soon as you get to Montana, and then as soon as you get to Oahu, you break out all of his good stuff, and there you go, he's, he's home, wherever he is. And I know that it's not possible to do the perfect iteration of base camp coming and going. You're gonna be flying stuff over uh, to Oahu. It's gonna be a little bit of mayhem for you guys. Not perfect. <laughs> it's okay if it's, if it's not perfect. It, it's still something. It, use things that are scent soakers, things where his scent is strong in them. It'll really help him go, okay, no matter what these four walls are, I'm cool. So that's the carrier part of things. Make sure, as you already have, he's already gotten his vaccinations, but you know, you wanna make sure that his vaccination records are handy. You wanna make sure that you've got the health certificate. Most airlines will not let you fly, fly without that health certificate. Just make sure that whatever airline that you're dealing with, you have dealt with every little you know, thing that could go wrong when you're standing at that ticket counter, okay? And that also goes for the airports that you're traveling. So whether you're going, let's say you're going New York to Butte, Montana. So you want to make sure that at JFK and Butte International Airport, both of those places, that, that you're meeting all of the standards that they want you to meet there. And then once you get to Hawaii, that in Oahu, same thing, okay? So you just want to make sure that you have your bases covered. Another thing I'd like you to consider is when you're doing airline travel with your cat, and this is there's no exception to this, when you're going through TSA, they're going to make you take your cat out of the carrier. That's a thing. Now, you can request a private room for that to happen. They, they have to take you into that private room. That, that's something they have to do. But if for some reason uh, you're rushed or whatever, you might want to think about harness training your cat now. Uh, get, just getting him comfortable in a harness because that way you can, if for some reason you have to take him out in the airport or along the way, he's not gonna get away from you. If you have the time to prep ahead of time and get him trained into a harness, that's really a great thing to do. And, and I wish I would have known that uh, the first couple of times I uh, traveled with my cats because it's hairy, you know, and you're already stressed and they're stressed, you know, so knowing that you're not going to lose them in JFK and it's happened is a plus. You know, have an emergency kit uh, that you travel with, with Basil. So if he's on any medications, you don't just want to have a couple of days worth, you want a couple of weeks worth, just in case you get to Montana, then get uh, to Oahu, and you're just having trouble finding a pharmacy that will fill the prescriptions. Don't forget, you're going interstate. So you're gonna need to find a vet once you land in your new home that will re-prescribe um, uh, Basil's meds if he does have any. Those favorite treats I told you about, yeah, make sure you got them. Wet wipes, oh my God, I I can't tell you how bad you might need those, you know? Extra towels just in case he pees or poops or throws up in his carrier, which let's, you know, I gotta be 100% forthcoming on this. I would say the majority of cats, especially in a long trip like this, are prone to just a little bit of throw up, a little bit of pee or poop. It just happens. So being able to clean them up and then getting rid of it, what's in that carrier, bring a towel that you don't care about to put in the bottom of that carrier because you may wanna just Boop, you know, just get rid of it. Have garbage bags with you. Puppy pee pads are also really nice to have on board, but those wet wipes, they go a long way. Make sure that they are pet approved. There are a number of them, hypoallergenic, unscented. Really, that those are the things that, and I wish somebody would have told me, you know, so I'm not sitting there with like a bag full of poop or a towel full of poop trying to figure out and everybody else on the plane or in the airport is running away from me. Yeah, that happened, so. It happened to me. And while you're gathering up towels or blankets or something like that, make sure that you have something that you can use during the flight to cover the carrier because some cats respond differently. Some want to see what's going on and some would rather just be in their cave and not see anything. So being able to restrict sight lines while your cat is traveling is a great option to have. Again, this is you knowing your cat and if your cat responds better, if they're just left in the dark by themselves, as long as they can breathe properly, then that's what you want to do for them. And then during the flight, you peek in there, it's like, hey, Chester, how you doing? Leave me alone. Right on, you know, and on we go. But again, this is all about options, all about choices, making sure that in that moment you can say, Chester needs a little time out. 
when you get to Montana and when you get to Oahu, Basil's a little out of sorts. It's okay. He will get back in sorts. And, and just trying to just adhere to your normal everyday routines within the chaos of moving goes a long way with cats. Again, it's not even a matter of being slaves to routine. We kind of all are to whatever degree, which is why it's moving is so stressful for us. Uh, but if you can keep mealtimes somewhat sacred, if you can travel with the same bowls that he would usually eat out of, all of these things things, Tony, uh, are things to consider. It seems like you're already ahead of the game. You got all his vaccinations uh, checked off uh, before he moves, but it's okay. It's not gonna, like I said before, whether he's got medication on board or not, it's not gonna be his best couple of days. But hey, he's got a whole lifetime of living in paradise, by the way, uh, to make up for it. And he's got a great person in you as well. Uh, so I think everything should be just dandy. And we'll talk about car travel some other time. Man, that was a whole lot just for air travel. Uh, but you know, the principles are still the same, right? So another question that I get asked a lot when it comes to airline travel is about sedation. Uh, if your cats aren't the ones who tend to really flip out when they're in their carrier or when they're in the car for short trips or whatever, then just don't do it. It's not going to be the best day of their life, but you know, unless they're that cat that freaks out a lot, then it's not going to be the worst either. Don't forget, they're going to be with you, they're going to be under your seat, you can check on them as the flight goes, and like I said, it's not the best, but it's not the worst. Start with something like this, these are flower essence remedies, they're completely non-toxic, non-harmful, and, and they're not as strong as prescriptions, and it's a good place to start. These come with spray tops on them so you can mist the carrier itself. Give them a few drops uh, that you pet on them during the trip if they're freaking out. But that way it's something that you can just sort of, you know, keep tabs on and give more as needed, as opposed to sort of proactively, you know, conking them out. Now, with the guidance of your veterinarian, try a few different types of medications and see how your cats do. We all react differently to different types of meds. So this way you can use a smaller dose, you can try it out first, see what their reaction is, and you can do that in the comfort of your own home with the guidance of your vet before it all happens, okay? I'd also be remiss if I didn't brag about this just a little bit. This is the Jackson Galaxy convertible backpack. Here's the thing I love about this. Well, I love a lot about this, but when we talk about this becoming his sort of panic room, his his sort of, this is the place I go, it doesn't just, it's not just a backpack where you put it on your back, clearly, and walk with it, uh, which is great in an airport where you've got other bags and everything else, but also this thing is convertible. It turns into a carrier, okay? Just like this, carrier like that, cat in here, and also it is compliant with most airlines. Of course, you have to check with the airline that you're traveling with, but this can go right under your seat. This bubble piece gets replaced with a flat piece, and it is a, a wonderful carrier, and it goes under the seat of most airlines. It is airline compliant, but again, I will have you check with your airline. But this I've found to be just a great travel buddy for cats and small dogs by the way so check it out all right now hopefully hopefully Tony that gets you guys off on the good foot going to Montana and then to paradise in Oahu I hope you guys have a wonderful life together I know you will in the meantime we'll talk about car travel some other time but let's just get you to Oahu in the first place and then we'll take it from there right okay and for the rest of you guys who want your questions answered you know the drill by now zoop this address right here just send in the question just like Tony did show me some cute footage of your cat or your cat doing what you don't want them to do do, and hopefully I will be able to answer it for you, okay? All right, don't forget, subscribe, hit the bell, make sure that you see these wonderful, I mean, you would have just saw me sing a song by the wonderful, iconic Alex Chilton and the Box Tops back in 1960. I don't know what the hell that was. Anyhow, until next time, you guys, all light and all love and all mojo to you. woo let's go, man, let's go. My baby just wrote me a letter Give me a ticket for an airplane I ain't got time to take a fast train Lonely days are yeah.